All right, what up, y'all? It's Meta Four back from Morning Kick the Raw. Represent everyone's you and I verse. We're gonna do a video on Gemini rising, right? First house, but with Taurus in the twelfth house. So Taurus in the twelfth house would be fixed Earth, being consistent or stubborn on your own way of dreaming, being illusionary, um, and having illusions and nightmares, right? So like, um, either you stay fixed in your dreamlike nature, or and people see you as consistent upon the same dream that you're working on, or they see you as stubborn. An individual that um, <clears throat> isn't changing up and uh, doesn't actually see that they're an illusion. You see what I mean? So, like a um, a dream that they cannot uh, attain. You see what I mean? So, um, with Gemini, it's a mutable air sign, being able to adapt to anybody's ways of thinking. Excuse me, thinking and communicating. And with that being said, you're gonna be you know, adapting to these other people's ways of communicating and thinking about your dream as well. So, it's like in the back of your mind kind of thing with the Gemini energy, uh, with this Taurus placement. So, to say that you're going to have these conversations and the Gemini energy is mutable, right? So, they're going to, so you're going to, I mean, to say, if you're this Gemini first house and you know, you're witnessing things transit from that first house placement of Gemini, it's going to be a, two-sided energy so an individual that can you know communicate with this group and also this group but also be themselves at the same time you see what I mean so to say if you have a dream and you've you're communicating this and you're thinking about it and this is what you communicate about to others and individuals like your seventh house being Sagittarius there it's gonna be like okay do you have a knowledge and wisdom about you know what you're going about and how you're relating it. So to say with this 12th house placement, you're going to have this conversation, but if you think it's an illusionary kind of thing, you're not even going to communicate about it. You're going to have this in the back of your mind and you're not going to, you know, communicate too much about it. You may, um, kind of go around the circumstance, like uh, in, a, in a roundabout way, you're going to ask the question, how do you see this? Or like, so, you know, um, it's like, uh, a conver like a conversation where you're creating a circumstance and I'm thinking about an individual so to say like okay imagine it was this individual doing this thing what would you think about them or like you see an individual doing your dream and you say what, what do you think it took to for them to achieve this and things of that nature and then boom you may research things about that in your personal life and say okay do I have these personal attributes and would I be able to um, relate to this you see what I mean would I be able to um, be able to be mutable, right? Be able to, like I say, relatable. And can I, and I be able to think in this uh, facet of life? So to say, if you were an individual that wants to write books for a living, you're going to figure out, okay, um, the individual that wrote all the Harry Potter books, you know, what did she go through to become an author? And also... What attributes did she, you know, exploit, so to speak, or like, what attributes did she need to actually create this, this uh, novel series and become so successful? Like, what steps did they take? You see what I mean? And with this, uh, like I say, your twelfth house being Taurus, it's a, it's a, it's a dream about. A Venus like nature right it's like a dream of like a loving a dream that you can love a dream that you can hold and manifest in reality so if you can't bring this into real reality it's going to be difficult with your uh, with your 12th house placement so you want to kind of have a dream that if it's that far out you want to have something that can also stabilize it in reality so like if you create this fantasy realm within your in the end within your book series right like Harry Potter you need to publish these books and actually put them out and have people, you know, experience your fantasy land. You see what I mean? So, like, that's actually a great way to look at the Gemini energy as um, the first house of being an individual that thinks and relates to others. You see what I mean? So, if you think about you having, like I say, this Venusian energy being Taurus, you had a Venus in the 12th house, you have this love and appreciation for dreams and illusions and nightmares. So an individual speaking to you about where they want to be in life, like 
there in this space, but where they could transcend to. You see what I mean? The 12th house is that ending. Like, what is their, what is your final goal? That's the things that you like to make sense about within an, another, another individual or within yourself as well. So that's what I mean by, you know, you talking to individuals about individual that you see already in this space. And you think about, like I say, this Venus here being able to appreciate um, and have value in people, places, and things. It's going to be like, what's your, what's your dream person? Like, what, what do you appreciate about an individual? And what is, like, what attributes do they have within that dream? What is your dream place of living? You should, these, are, these are things that you can attribute to this 12th house. So it's like, kind of like you being in another space. It's actually really good to analyze this kind of energy if you really think about it, because the Gemini comes from, you know, I mean, that third that third house energy, that energy that's before the second house, I mean, after the second house, but before the fourth house. So it's like being an individual that like being having that value, that second house, and then having and being in between that privacy. So what is what do you, what do you Value and what's your privacy and that little in between and that's what kind of creates that Gemini energy. So like to say, a Gemini can have a conversation that you don't know what's going on in the back of their mind, but they're gonna bring it to the forefront if it's um, warranted. If it's uh, they can bring value to themselves by bringing this up in the conversation. And is it very private? And do they have to be one on one with you? Is the Gemini, you know, gonna? say like look we can talk about this but talk about it later when there's less people things like that so that's a way to look at it with the venusian energy there and uh, a way to look at that 12th house being in taurus which i say is fixed earth so like i said i like to be in that illusionary state about practical things like oh where could i practically be in five years that's something that a gemini would like to you know have an illusion about or a dream about and you know if, if things aren't going really right in your in your life then boom that could be that nightmare on top of that so yeah um like i always say holla back at me if you have any questions or um anything like that you know i'm happy to help at a conscious one three four seven c-o-n-s-c-i-o-u-s one three four seven at gmail.com and uh, you can holla at me for multiple two things you see what i'm saying got, got me a nice little camera now so i can shoot your music videos and things like that if you, you know what i mean if you want me to do all that you see what i'm saying i'm about to be putting out some of the videos of my own and uh yeah Things like that. Some music videos of my own, I'm going to say. And yeah, so you could also holler at me for readings and things like that. Or, um, you know, just uh, working on some music. So, peace and love if you believe in all that. And uh, holler back at me. Have a good one.